Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to a new edition of our video series. We have today with us two directors from Fortuna Admissions, the MBA admissions consulting firm. We have Judith Hodera, who had been Senior Associate Director of Admissions and Acting Director at Wharton School. And we have Caroline Diarte Edwards, who had been the Director of Admissions at NCOT. Two great schools. Uh, you've seen a lot of applications over the years. Thousands have been read by the two of you. What are the most common mistakes you see applicants making? Caroline. Uh, one common mistake is making a very hasty choice of school to apply to and then not doing much research. And what we see and what I saw as admissions director and what we see with our clients is that candidates who really invest some time to think carefully about the schools that they're going to apply to and take the time to get to know the schools very well actually end up being much better candidates mm. because the schools are looking for the candidate to convey a sense of fit and a passion for that school. And if they've really invested some significant time up front in getting to know the school, ideally actually visiting the school or at the very least um, attending some events and networking with the school community, um, they have a much better sense of what the school is about, what they can bring to the school themselves, and you know how they're going to benefit themselves from the program. And that comes across very strongly, both in, in the written application, but very importantly in the interview as well. Judith, what do you see? I think that students feel that they might be able to put it off till the last minute. They can wait and do it over Christmas break, no problem, 10 days, sure, I can apply. And it does take time, and I think that it's a hard thing to sort of check out the time of your very busy work life, social life, other life, to make sure that you have the opportunity to be introspective and not only to fill out all of the questions that are being asked of you, the essays, the data forms, but to really thoughtfully prepare. So the applications are designed not only to understand what you've done in the past, and by looking at your resume, but where you want to be next. And that for us is probably, when I was at Wharton, a very big mistake that students wouldn't spend the time to carefully craft their message so that they may have one piece that talked about a certain part of their life, but it had nothing to do with other things that they were discussing. The recommenders were maybe not as on board as they should have been. And it's really less of a question of what were the numbers like? What was your undergrad GPA? What are your GMAT scores? but more about how are you going to be able to present yourself as a candidate holistically. And so for us, it was really taking the time to be thoughtful and introspective that can make a very big difference in the process. Caroline, you have another mistake? Another common mistake is repeating your resume in the essays. Remember that the application is like building a picture with many different parts of a puzzle. And you don't want to repeat the same story in different parts of the application. You're trying to build a holistic picture overall and how you can convey yourself as an individual beyond just your professional accomplishments. Judith? I think the underestimation of what is actually being asked on the forms themselves. There's a lot of information. It's not just name and birth date and where did you grow up and where did you go to college. Some of the schools are asking for in-depth discussion in addition to the essays about greatest accomplishment, 100 words or less, or something you wish you had done differently, 100 words or less. You cannot do that the night before the application is due. So without a doubt, giving yourself time, sit down, calmly, look at what's being asked, and then really make sure that you can input that information. One other thing along those lines is that all of the employment data is going to need to be verified by the schools to which you're applying to. So if you need to make sure at the time of application that all of that information is correct, and that is certainly the kind of thing, if you're relying on other people to give you data, you need to give them time to get that in to support your application as well. Right. Sometimes we would see applications that would really um, look very good in the essays, the, the application form, but then would be completely let down by the recommendations. So it, it's important to make sure that the person that you're asking to be your recommender really is your champion, so have a good discussion with them about it. Um, make sure that you brief them on what is expected because not all recommenders will know what an MBA program is about, what the school is looking for. When we work with our clients, we work with them on a briefing document that the, that the client can go through with their recommender that really sets out you know, what the school is looking for um, and, uh, and convey to the recommender um, some of the strengths that that client is trying to convey in their own application so that the recommendation is aligned with how they're presenting themselves to the school. Horror stories. Okay, both of you have sat in the role and have judged the candidate. 
Uh, in your years at Wharton, uh, what was the single biggest mistake you ever saw a candidate make? Aside from naming the wrong school in your essay? Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. We would laugh about it. We would call up our friends in Boston or otherwise <laughs> in California and say, hey, we think we got the wrong essay. Um, and that, you know, that's just jitters. That's just nerves. We think that oversharing can be a little bit of an issue in applications. Do you remember one oversharing candidate in particular? Sure. Um, there are ways to allude to misdemeanors that you may have committed in college without going into great detail about them. Um, there are questions on applications asking, have you ever been suspended? For what reason? And there's a, there are ways to talk about that, and then there are ways to talk about that. So we would say discretion is certainly a useful adage when you're letting schools know what you've been up to in your undergraduate years. And Caroline, the big faux pas you saw at NCIAD in your years there? Um, I remember one candidate who I was going to interview, and he thought that as a nice introduction, he would send me a video of himself disco dancing. Disco dancing. I hope there was that, you know, crystal glass ball in the <laughs> middle of the ballroom uh, with the glint of cool. uh, light that just speckled all over the place. It was very well done. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did he get in? He didn't, know. Oh, well, I'm sure he had a lot of fun disco dancing. <laughs> uh, thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Judith. Uh, and thank you for watching. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quads.